guys welcome back to the trains with shane youtube channel and you are looking at another will it run video today's guest is an older unit made by atlas well made by kato for atlas it is an sd7 in southern pacific bloody nose colors Guys, I will call this an SD9 once or twice during the video. Forgive me, it's just my own mistakes. Um, I picked this up on eBay, as I often do, and I got it for a pretty good deal. Not great money, but not horrible money. Um, I was willing to pay a tiny bit more than I usually would for a Atlas or Kato of this particular vintage. Uh, for two reasons. One, it's Southern Pacific Bloody Nose, and two, as you guys can see, it's got knuckle couplers fitted on it already, so I don't have to do that. Um, you guys haven't seen a whole lot of Southern Pacific stuff on the channel before. Um, I think I have shown two, maybe. I had a very old Atlas, also made by Kato, um, Alco RS11 in the Black Widow scheme that was virtually new old stock, ran great. Um, and I also had a lifelike, it was a streamliner, I can't remember if it was an EMD F unit or if it was um, an Erie built or, or like a, like a FMC liner or anything like that. Um, I probably did a video on it so go back through the channel that one was also in the black widow scheme i actually prefer the later bloody nose scheme uh, over the black widows um i don't know why it's just i like what i like so let's take a look at our subject matter here today as you can see the standard vintage atlas Cotto slip top case with the foam insert bloody nose scheme as we've talked about before the simple gray with the red nose and the red tail standard southern pacific lettering here so this was before the speed lettering comment down below if you prefer the speed lettering guys i actually prefer the older font here which is weird because on stuff like rio grande I like the speed lettering better. I don't know. People preferences. So let's get this out of here. Let's take a look at our... Yep, made in Japan means you bought a Kato. Not a bad thing. Pretty good looking unit here. Does not appear to have a lot of runtime on it. Is that like an oily spot or is that a drop of glue I can't tell could be either one although I don't think it's glue because there's not any on where I would expect to see glue like on the stanchions or or around the cab window glazing if uh, someone was a little sloppy with it got both our tugboat horns here pretty good depth for molded in fan details guys if i remember right these were like late 80s early 90s production so coming on you know around 35 ish years old at this point again got our knuckle couplers here mounted to the shell let's see see if I can get a, an additional light here. See what I'm thinking. On certain older units, the micro trains conversion, you would saw off the front of the, the truck where the coupler was mounted prior and glue in a draft gearbox onto the shell. I can't tell if that's what was done here or if the couplers were shell mounted from the factory um, either way these would have been rapido couplers uh, originally so they've been switched out which is 
one of the reasons why I paid a tiny bit more money for this unit because I don't have to source the couplers and install them myself, pay shipping on all that. You guys know, you know. Nice looking detail. Looks like, yeah, there are a number of boards in there. They, uh, they look void of numbers, though. What about on the front? Maybe. Let's do a zoom. Maybe they're stenciled on the back of the plastic. We'll have to see when we light them up. Let's turn this thing over. Yeah, definitely not brand new. Well, used, obviously, is what I mean. It, it could be new old stock, but looks like, yeah. Got some telltale signs here. We got some oil, a little bit of, a little bit of schmoo, maybe some carpet fibers. But our wheels are clean. There's a little bit of wear in the plating on them, as you can see. That shouldn't affect electrical conductivity. Overall, a pretty clean unit. So what do you say we do what we do and get this thing over onto the test track, find out what it does and what it does not do. I will see you folks over there. All right, guys, as you can see, we have put the SD9 on the the portable switching layout that I got from Steve's Trains. Got our controllers on already. We'll pick a direction and dial up the juice. Nice and smooth. Let's bring her back. Runs like a sewing machine. Do you expect anything else from a as new looking Kato, even if it is 15 or 20 years old? Playing with the throttle here. That's my stuttering, not the locomotives. In the camera, you can see that the lights flicker a little bit. That's probably due to my dirty track here. She moves out pretty smooth. So, Southern Pacific Bloody Nose SD9 by um, Atlas Cotto. Um, will it run? Yes, it will. I look forward to running this around on the rescue layout eventually. Um, I've got plans for another layout coming up, maybe. We'll have to see how that goes. But it is such that the radius of the curves may be too tight for six axle uh, locomotives. We'll, we'll give it a test and see because some of them actually work on the real small radius stuff, amazingly. So, until next time, I want to thank you guys for watching another Trains with Shane Woolett run video. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.